Well, here is such a pond with its marvelous variety of uh, animal and uh, plant life in and around the water. First thing that we see are these uh, reeds that uh, all young children are familiar with, the cattail. That, of course, is the flowering and fruiting part of the cattail. And here are some beautiful water lilies. I don't think there's anything prettier in nature than a lovely white water lily. Famous French artist did a whole series of wonderful pictures of such uh, flowers. And the pond lilies, which are smaller, they're yellow mostly, but very attractive. And there are all sorts of uh, flowers and uh, fruiting shrubs that you find in the swamps that I imagine you might find 50 species uh, of all kinds around the pond that's nearest your own home. We find thistles and bone set and joe pie weed. And also we find a uh, mint and uh, valerian that is used as a uh, medicine to reduce fever, at least it used to be by the old-fashioned uh, home remedy cookers. <laughs> and we find many uh, varieties of uh, the parsley family, including this water hemlock here, to which the bees have been attracted. And here we have one of the wild iris that we often find in our ponds. And a snail is walking down the, uh, the flower itself. Of course, the snail uh, it has no housing problem. Wherever it goes, it carries its house on its back, which is a good idea these crowded days. Now, if you look at the water itself, you may see something that looks like a green scum. Well, that isn't scum at all. That is uh, plant life. Uh, millions and millions of uh, small plants that we call algae. As a matter of fact, it's the simplest kind of plant, along with the mosses. It's a single cell plant, the simplest form of plant life that we know. And here it is magnified several hundreds uh, of times. Each little uh, square that you see there is a single cell and they're joined together in long threads. Now these are very important. Uh, they support all animal life in the long run. They have a green coloring matter that produces oxygen uh, when the sunlight falls upon these plants. And oxygen, of course, is needed in the water uh, so that the animals that live in the water can breathe. This is the way it looks uh, when you gaze at it yourself. But of course, under the microscope, it looks entirely different. And here are some of the uh, protozoa, the single-cell uh, microscopic forms of animal life. There are very many of them, an odd shape, too. That's called stentor, that particular species there. And here's another one of the protozoa, though there are hundreds of species in any teaspoonful of of pond water that you might take up and put under your microscope in this fashion. And here is the uh, Noctiluca miliaris, that little uh, protozoan that I told you furnishes the sparkle in water when it's there by the millions. This is another type called a heliozoa. Oh, I couldn't begin to name all the different kinds of protozoa that you will find, as I say, in a single teaspoonful of water. This is an amoeba. Any high school student would uh, recognize that as uh, the first thing it probably saw under a microscope. Now, at this point, it's very difficult to tell the plants from the animals. Now, these are plants. That, that is a desmid. And that's another desmid. Even the scientists have to take a good look to be sure which is the plant and which is the animal when the life is this simple and primitive. Well, we're back on the surface now. We have these little whirligig uh, bugs uh, skating around on the surface. They go around in packs, so to speak, hordes. And a frog sticks up its head. 
because there are oh, a dozen different, different species of frogs probably in the pond nearest your home. Very good swimmers too, in case you want a lesson in grace in swimming, just watch any frog. And these, of course, are uh, uh, tadpoles. You know, frogs lay their eggs in gelatinous masses in the water, and the tadpoles hatch out with those tails that disappear. Here's a whole horde of young tadpoles just out of the egg. Finally, the tail disappears, and the legs appear, and the uh, tadpole becomes a frog. And then they have to watch out, because a wild duck like this has its young ones that might eat some of the uh, smaller uh, tadpoles, and also a great deal of the vegetable matter that floats about in such ponds. More vegetable matter than uh, fishing, or frog matter, so to speak. And the insects above, of course, such as this, this lovely dragonfly, sometimes called a darning needle. It doesn't darn up anybody's ears. It's really beneficial. It eats uh, mosquitoes, as a matter of fact, among other insects. And in the reeds, we see a mass of floating vegetation that it looks suspicious. So we pull apart the top and we find that it's a, a nest of some marsh bird. And the bird has covered up the nest, or at least the eggs. Well, here it is. It's a grebe. It's a little grebe, sometimes called a dab chick. It's a diving bird, somewhat like a duck. Pretty well camouflaged there, I'd say. And here among the cattails is the nest of another bird. Oh, it's a bunting, one of the buntings. And a snake, another inhabitant of the pond area. But don't be afraid, it's not a dangerous snake. This is called the collared adder, A-D-D-E-R. And there's a toad. The toad is the first cousin of the frogs, you know. Prefers to live most of its life on dry land and it has a rougher skin. That's all. And here is a climbing frog. If you could uh, look closely, you'd see that it has little uh, suction pads at the tips of its toes. These we call the spring peepers when we hear them in March and April, in the evening mostly. And, of course, there are all sorts of uh, reeds, uh, the great Phragmites reed that grows in abundance around uh, uh, ponds. I think there's something coming there. This grebe has heard it, covers up its nest and takes it on the uh, run. There's a lizard going into the water, too. The whole marsh is alerted. Oh, it's a hedgehog. Well, a hedgehog is not a duck or a fish, but it can swim, and evidently it has business across the pond. Oh ho, the adder is in its path. Which one will give way? Well, the adder is going to make the uh, first uh, bluff. But the hedgehog is uh, not taking any bluffs today. It's pretty well protected, you know, by its quills. So the little snake moves off. Of course, snakes can swim very well. And they can glide along the um, bottom of the pond, too, but of course not indefinitely. They have to have air to breathe. Well, these are just a few of the plants and the animals and the wonderful forms of microscopic life that you can find in any pond in your neighborhood. It's wonderful. I hope you'll look into it someday.